show, starring Michael Kelly. Tonight, Michael welcomes sportswoman Lauren Diani, comedian Ed Marion, vocalist Joe Reynolds, and the Virgil Scott Band. That's amazing. Oh, my tie's all screwed up. Uh, my name is Michael Kelly. Welcome to the Badger Show. We've got a great lineup tonight. But uh, I was reading the paper today in the business section of the uh, Globe and Mail that uh, Molson's president, uh, uh, Marshall Cohen, reportedly made $1.4 million in salary last year. And part of that was made up of the fact that he took back most of his empties. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, ever, <laughs> sorry, um, ever wonder that uh, lotteries are uh, big misses, of course. Uh, we got about 13% uh, of uh, Canada's largest lotteries. Profits go to uh, any type of cultures, uh, but not the kind you think. Uh, actually, uh, the money goes into renovating those old bingo halls. <laughs> anyway, folks, we've got a great show tonight. We've got uh, guest uh, Lauren Diani, uh, comedian Ed Marino. And, of course, Joe Reynolds. So stick tuned, uh, stay tuned, and we'll be right back. Saturday mornings on BSTV, join Rick Robertson for a hilarious half hour of galactic humor and universal nonsense. Hi there, kids. Rick Robinson here. Join me Saturday mornings on BSTV for Rick Robinson Space Cadets! That's Rick Robinson Saturday mornings on BSTV. CRTC approved a number of different uh, new uh, channels for us uh, Canadian viewers. And uh, we thought that uh, what we should do is show the ones that were not accepted uh, through application. And there was quite a few of them that were actually turned down. And I guess the uh, CRTC felt that uh, uh, these channels weren't uh, good enough uh, to, uh, to run on Canadian television. So what we have done is we got to hold these applications, uh, part of the package that was sent in to the CRTC. and. Uh, this is what we've come up with. Uh, first one here is uh, an interesting uh, combination of uh, automotive, uh, automotive skills and uh, people, of course. And uh, one of the things was called the uh, Driver's Network. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. These aren't, these aren't my applications, folks. Uh, a very uh, serious uh, problem today in society, of course, is... Uh, Breakup of families and uh, and all that unfortunate stuff that comes with uh, certain uh, social problems. However, in uh, light of all that situation, we've uh, gone ahead and we've uh, uh, found this uh, this one this one new uh, network, which uh, again was turned down because of the uh, social climate. And uh, what they call it the uh, dysfunctional family network. Okay. 
Uh, this one here, for example, is uh, for a group of people uh, who uh, unfortunately just uh, just uh, don't seem to add up half the time. And it's unfortunate, but still, it's a very popular channel, which uh, I, I'm surprised it didn't uh, take off. And uh, what they've called it is the, uh, the low IQ channel. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, if you want, uh, you know, get uh, write, get the uh, pen and paper out today and write to the uh, CRCC and say, you know, we saw we saw three shows that unfortunately did not make it on uh, to the airwaves. So uh, please, we like to see these uh, shows come on. So anyway, <laughs> my uh, my next guest uh, <laughs> is a writing uh, a writing girl, and. Uh, Unfortunately, I, I still can't uh, correctly uh, pronounce this name, so I'm going to get her out here, and she can explain to us exactly what this all means. Uh, a big warm welcome for uh, Lauren Diani. Hi. Hi, Lauren. How are you doing? I'm good, thanks. You're not going to whip me that thing, I hope, are you? It depends what you say to me. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see if you can pronounce dressage. It's a low IQ family thing. Uh. <laughs> The host whipping channel. That's right. New this fall. Okay, I'm having a problem with this word called dressage. Is that correct? Dr dressage. You did it right. Dressage. 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 How do you, what's it's, what's it's that mean? It's a French word that means to train. It's okay. Very simple, and it means to train horses. To train horses. Yes. That's all you do. You don't ride horses. We or? do, but we train them. It. We train them in the art of dressage, which is basically like ballet on horseback or teaching horses to dance. But it has a physiotherapy effect for them too, as if uh, the ballet dancer uh, practices at the bar every day for a few hours. That's what dressage is: to mm -hmm. build the muscles and the strength, and bring out the beauty of the horse's movements. Okay, that's now, what I, we do. When I first uh, think of uh, dressage, I, I think of uh, the the Royal Canadian Mounted uh, Police, the horses. Is that is that is that dressage <laughs> well, or close to it? Or to people who are uneducated. Sorry. Oh yeah. You <laughs> They do. I'm not. <laughs> I'm not criticizing you. They do a beautiful job, but what they do is not dressage. It is pattern movements and figures and things like that, which is lovely. But it's more of a military kind of style. Mm -hmm. What we do is actual more dancing. You know, where they dance on the spot, or they do like skipping or pirouettes, where they turn around. And it's an ancient art. It started 600 B.C. in Greece. And it was for parades, for kings, for noble people to get on their steed and go through the town in their parade, and they would feel like the best, you know. Now, can you teach these horses how to, uh, say, uh, do a Michael Jackson moonwalk yes. or something? Yes. <laughs> there is a movement, and it's called the rain back, where they do precise backward steps. Uh, how does somebody get involved in this? Like, this is something I would not probably go after. Well, the love of the horse usually starts yeah. people, and quite often people will have started jumping. When mm -hmm. they learn how to ride, they start to jump, or they start to do a three-day eventing. And then through the fact that they're, it's kind of a little more dangerous to do that, sometimes they say, well, I like to ride, let me learn how to do the flat work or the dressage, mm -hmm. and then they get hooked on it. Usually kids don't start riding dressage because it's very systematic, and you have to be doing it every day in a systematic way because it is an art of training. No, now, for some reason, I can't see going out to uh, the racetrack and have these things, uh, like you bet on these horses. You don't bet on these horses, right? No, it's strictly an art. They're at the post. <laughs> it's strictly an art and They're a sport. And, and it is the fastest growing equestrian sport right now in, in the whole world. You uh, brought a tape uh, with you, is mm -hmm. that correct, on showing the, uh, how this whole thing works out? The or, most uh, recent international competition with one of our top riders, Penny Winsome. Uh, Penny Zavitz and her horse, Winsome, sorry. And... <laughs> Get that straight, folks. <laughs> and she just finished eighth there in Holland, uh, mm -hmm. the Volvo World Cup. So we have a World Cup circuit just like everybody else. That was a Piaf, which was trotting on the spot. This is a canter, collect a canter, now into a canter pirouette, where the horse is, has to pirouette around on a small circle. Smaller diameter, the better. Gives you a higher mark. Every mark is judged zero to ten for every movement, and there could be 35 movements in a comp, you know, in a test. Do they do this down at the uh, Royal Winter Fair? They have the Volvo World Cup night 
the first Saturday of the Royal Winter Fair, where this girl won, actually, last November there. Mm -hmm. what, what type of horses are those? Are like, is that an Arabian or something? No. Or a... No, they're bred for this sport. They're usually warm-blooded horses, which is uh, usually a European horse. I think horse. those cold-blooded horses. Right? That's right. They're bred specifically for dressage or for show jumping. Um, they're European, either German or Swedish or Swiss or Danish or... There's a big industry over there of just breeding now, that kind you, of horses. Now, you also have a big sort of activity coming up uh, in the near future. Is that correct? In what August, is that all about? In August, we have the Canadian Championship. Right. And that's at Kilbourne Farm in London, Ontario. And then in September, if anybody wants to come locally, we have the Ontario Pro Provincial Championships okay. here in Leechcroft Farm in Thornhill. That's up at 7 and 4? 7 and Leslie. 7 and Leslie, okay. And it'll be September 18th, I believe, for three days. Is there a contact phone number that people can, like, say phone up to get information? Yes, or? I do. I have it in my pocket. Okay. Oh. <laughs> it's area code 905-728-5446. Okay, we'll get this up on the, the screen later on then. Uh, what else happens here? Like, I mean, you're in costume, and, and, and you don't do this all the time. <laughs> no, I do it. Well, we have to train every day, mm -hmm. um, six days a week, uh, for six years to get a horse to do perform those movements. So you start my, I've been doing it for three years with my horse, so right. I'm still on my way. Great. But it's kind of like any sport. You need to do it every day to be good at it. Okay, then, Lauren. Well, uh, we're going to uh, keep an eye, uh, an eye open. Pronounce it for me. Their size. Dressage. Dress size. <laughs> Dress size. I think a massage for some reason. Dress size. Uh, anyway, Lauren, well, thank you very much and uh, thank you. all the best and uh, we'll see what happens. Thanks Take a lot. Take care. Okay. Lauren. We're going to take a, uh, we're going to take a commercial break and we'll be right back. New Age Products, it's Anthony Bobbitt's Personal Penis Power Tapes. Thanks to these mind-altering tapes with subliminal messages, I now find myself exploring the universe in adult video stores. Yes, order today. That's Anthony Bobbitt's Personal Penis Power Tapes by calling 1-800-SO-GOOD. That's 1-800-SO-GOOD. Operator standing by. My next guest, you can always catch him down at the uh, Laugh Resort. Ladies and gentlemen, a warm welcome for Ed Marion. Ed! Thank you very much. Uh, it's good to be here on the Badger Show. Uh, I've been on a real self-improvement kick recently, so uh, I went to my favorite bookstore to buy a book that I've been recommended to me called The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People by Dr. Stephen Covey. And uh, I took the book home and I read it, and i got to tell you, I was very disappointed to find that sleeping in and collecting unemployment were not on the list. <laughs> and uh, while I was in the bookstore, like a lot of people do, I was browsing through the most recent uh, Joy of Sex books. I think it's called The New Joy of Sex. And uh, as I was flipping the pages, uh, I remember thinking to myself, man, you need a partner for some of this stuff. <laughs> Uh, I'm terribly addicted to those match-three scratch-and-win lottery tickets. And I don't know about you guys, but I find there's such a tease. 
Because you always start off with the promise of some huge prize and inevitably end up with nothing. I was thinking, wouldn't it be funny if your fate in life was decided by a scratch and win kind of a system? Huh? Born with a big silver patch over your head? Your parents could hardly wait to take you home so they could scratch it off with their thumbnail. And it would always be the same cruel joke. It would always be, oh, I wonder what our son or daughter is going to be. Oh, scratch, 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 doctor, doctor, lawyer. Hey, this is looking pretty good. Scratch, 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 lawyer, accountant, accountant. Not bad. Scratch, scratch, loser, loser, loser. Rats. Hey, any Star Trek fans here today? Yeah? Star Trek fans? Great show, Star Trek, but uh, I wasn't allowed to watch it when I was a kid. My dad said it was obviously fake. I said, well, Dad, what do you mean? He said, well, for one thing, here you've got this huge spaceship, probably the biggest vehicle ever built, and it doesn't even have a steering wheel. Said, yeah, but come on, Dad, it's in the future. They use a computer to drive the ship. He said, bah, that's not driving, that's typing. I said, listen, pal, I didn't get to meet your mom doing this. Hey, baby, want to go for a drive in my muscle car? Here, let me get the door for you. Tab, tab. Hey, gang, look at me. I'm burning rubber in the parking lot. Whoa. Uh-oh, watch out for that student driver. Not, uh, not much of a risk taker, my dad, either. Remember this one time we said, Hey, Dad, how about making us some Jiffy Pop? He just looked at us and said, Jiffy Pop, are you nuts? A friend of mine made Jiffy Pop one time. Blew his head clean off. Just a bloody time bomb on the end of a coat hanger. <laughs> but eventually he'd give in and he'd make it for us, you know. But uh, he'd make us go into the basement while he made it. He'd tie a broomstick to the Jiffy Pop handle. Stand ten feet from the stove. Shield himself with a garbage can lid. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, five years of uh, acting and mime classes went into that bit, so... <laughs> Thank you very much. Here's a... Uh, Here's some advice for you. If you've ever had a fight with your boyfriend, girlfriend, lover, spouse, whatever, and you want to make up with them but you don't quite know what to say, just go to your, your favorite record store and pick up a copy of Dan Hill's Greatest Hits. And take it home and uh, plagiarize as many of the lyrics as you think you might need. <laughs> just do one of these. Hello, baby? Yeah, listen, uh, sometimes when we touch, <laughs> yeah, the honesty's too much. And I have to uh, close my eyes and hide. Yeah, I know it sounds like a crock, but this time I really mean it. Yeah, I just want to hold you till I die or till we both break down and cry. I just want to hold you till the fear in me subsides, for God's sake. <laughs> What's that? You'd rather hurt me honestly than mislead me with a lie. So why don't I just eat raw meat and die? Hey, you must have the bootleg version. <laughs> and finally... And finally, I'm, uh, I'm a huge hockey fan, and I'm uh, waiting for the day that the Montreal Canadiens and the Toronto Maple Leafs will play in the Stanley Cup Finals. I think that'll be great. Personally, I think that the uh, Leafs could beat the Canadians on the ice, but for sure the Habs would win the battle of the public address announcers. Because you know for sure that the announcers at the Montreal Forum have a better handle on English names than the guys at the Gardens have on French names. <laughs> you, get a, you get a couple of particularly difficult French names like Le but de Canadien, compté par le numéro 18, Jacques Veillancourt, assisté par le numéro 22, Yves Baudouin. You know for sure if the Gardens is going to sound like this. Canadian's goal, scoring by number 18, Jaquez Valencourt, <laughs> assisted by number 22, Ivis Baudouin. <laughs> hey, thank you very much. That's my time. Yes, all right. Excellent. How you doing? All right. Hey, Marion, folks. Stay here, Ed. <laughs> We're going to take it over to uh, Joe Reynolds. Thank you very much. Take it away, Joe. You can give me an hour, a 
Millions of Canadians suffer from it. It affects one in every family. You never know when it could strike. Scientists can't put their finger on it. SRI. Sudden rectal itch. We need your help. Call 1-800-DIG-DEEP. Uh, wraps our show up again for this week and uh, thank you uh, very much for uh, tuning in and watching the Badger Show and uh, of course I want to thank all our guests uh, Lauren Diani, uh, Joe Reynolds and of course uh, Ed uh, Marion so until next week, uh, Michael Kelly saying good night and adios